Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and welcome to our Monday update on the Westchester coronavirus outbreak. This is Monday, May 17th. We are now in uh, our 15th month of the pandemic, and uh, we're starting to see signs that hopefully tell us that we're reducing ourselves down to zero. We'll give you some numbers, and then we'll give you a report on a couple of the different issues that are at hand. I'm joined, uh, as I always am, by our Deputy County Executive, Ken Jenkins, who's with me here, and he'll be reporting on some of our homebound vaccination plans. And then in a few minutes, I'm going to welcome to the microphone the supervisor of the town of North Salem, Warren Lucas. As you know, we invite uh, different mayors uh, and supervisors to join us here, talk a little bit about what's happening in their community, about COVID or any other related situation. There are 45 municipalities in Westchester County, each one in their own right has their own particular issues and priorities and the things that make them unique from the other communities. And we like the opportunity to bring them here and, and have them have a chance to uh, talk about their corner of the county and uh, hopefully a chance for you to learn more about the whole county. And we've had all of them here at least once before. We're happy to have Supervisor Lucas back with us. I'll bring him on in a minute. The, uh, the numbers on COVID, which we always start off with, are very good. We have seen now a, a decrease in the number of active cases and hospitalizations and fatalities that has now been a steady decrease over an extended period of time. The numbers from today, they're up on the New York State tracker, show that uh, when you do the subtraction of all of the cases that we've had that have tested positive throughout the pandemic, less the number of people two weeks ago who had tested positive, we now have 922 active cases uh, of coronavirus in the county. And that number is down in the last week from 1,352, that's where it was a week ago, over 400 more cases. Two weeks ago, we were at 2,062 cases. And if you want to jump back a month ago, on April 17th, we had 4,363 active cases. So over the course of one month, we've gone from 4,300 active cases down to 922 cases. And in a greater perspective, if you go back to the middle of January, which four months ago, we had 11,500 cases. So this diminution in the amount of active cases is uh, very clear and very pronounced. And now we're getting less than 50 positive cases a day throughout the testing. If this trend continues, uh, then uh, you know we see the really flattening out of um, what we've experienced, but we're not there yet. The other numbers are also very encouraging. Uh, as of the last report, we have 63 people across the whole county that are hospitalized for COVID. A week ago, that number was 76. Two weeks ago, that number was 114 people hospitalized. And if you go back one month, we had 150 people hospitalized. So over the course of a month, from 150 down to 63, that is a good trend. And then, of course, the very difficult topic of fatalities, and, and I always caution that we don't like to take individual lives and turn them into statistics, um, but the numbers there as well. A month ago, we were losing 14 people a week. Uh, a month ago, uh, 14 people out of a much wider base of number of people infected. Now this week, this past seven days, we've lost four individuals of Westchester County. That is a uh, that is a much lower number. We'd like to be able to report zero change uh, from uh, week to week, and that's what we hope for. And of course, we continue to have our Ribbons of Remembrance program to remember all of those who have died during COVID. On a companion basis, probably the single biggest reason for the reduction is the rise in vaccinations. Now, we get numbers every Tuesday from the state that, that update where we are, so I'm almost at the end of a week cycle with the following numbers. But we have reported from the state because all the reporting data for vaccinations goes into the state and you're tracked by your zip code, which puts you in Westchester County. It doesn't matter if you were vaccinated at the Javits Center or at Aqueduct or any place upstate New York, uh, you're tracked by your home address and that puts you into our system. We have had at this point 47% of Westchester residents fully vaccinated, having had two doses where two doses were adequate. If they had the j, &J they had one dose. So we're almost at 50% of the county fully vaccinated, and that number could jump up when we see the statistics tomorrow, which we'll report on on Thursday. And 56% of the population has at least one dose of vaccine. And so in a three to four week period of time, that number of fully vaccination would go up to 56% as those people are taken care of. And then of course, we're dealing with additional doses of vaccine over the course of that time. When we look at the population that's 18 and over, that's the cohort of people that have been eligible for a vaccination for the longest period of time. Those under 18 now have just recently 
become eligible for vaccinations. There's a much smaller portion of, of young people that have been vaccinated. At 18 and over, we're at 70 percent of our population. And that is a very encouraging number. And of course, for those who work in settings where they're dealing with other people 18 years and over, to know that 70 percent of our population uh, has at least one vaccination dose. Hopefully, the second one in the next few weeks is a very encouraging number. Uh, those numbers are working off the base from the 2010 census of 967,612 Westchester residents. We, we believe and hope that when the new census data comes out in the middle of August, we will see Westchester exceed, for the first time in its history, a population of a million people. That would change the percentages a little bit. But uh, the most important thing is that we get as many people vaccinated as is possible. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what our vaccination strategy is going forward and then also some of the changes uh, that Governor Cuomo has announced earlier today. And of course, we've got lots of evaluation to do as to how we implement those things. I'll talk about that in a second. But first, I'd like to bring up uh, Town Supervisor Warren Lucas. Warren has served 12 years as Town Supervisor of North Salem. Uh, and he served on the town council before that. He has long continuous service to his town and uh, he's a executive, uh, former executive with IBM. And uh, in addition to that, uh, he has really done an outstanding job. And um, this shows that here in Westchester County, uh, there's respect across the political party lines. We're in different political parties, but Warren has been a very effective leader. And uh, we're very happy that uh, we're working cooperatively with him and the 5,000 residents of the town of North Salem. We'll see what the census does to his numbers too. Supervisor Warren Lucas. Thank you, Warren. You know, I, I, first of all, thank you very much for allowing me to come and talk a little bit about COVID-19, my town, and maybe a couple of other things. I'll only talk for a few minutes. Um, but George just said we're in different parties, and it really isn't obvious to me at all, you know, uh, ever since this started. Actually, I've been, as George pointed out, in public office for about 31 years right now. And ever since this has started uh, with the, uh, the COVID-19, the work that your administration's done, uh, you and Ken and, and everybody else, uh, it's been phenomenal, including all of us and making sure that everything that we need at any point in time is answered and, and available to us. Very much, very much appreciated. You know, we started out a year ago, 15 months ago, uh, uh, maybe 14, 15 months, and my biggest problem at the time was I have two nursing homes in town, and I think as all of you know, we had a lot of uh, COVID patients going in there. We ended up losing about 20 people very early on from, uh, from COVID deaths in the nursing homes. At the time, nobody had PPE equipment. We were relying on a bunch of different places, even before the county got it. Uh, we were delivering them to different towns around us. Uh, we were actually supplying the nursing home. Uh, a week at a time with masks and stuff like that that we had gotten and purchased directly from China uh, through some friends that we had. And so I look back on how, how hectic it was and it's, everything's just starting to calm down right now. Um, you know, one of the things that we did early on, uh, we had a, uh, we have a couple of constituencies that, uh, that were having some hard problems, hard times. And one was the nursing home, uh, the, uh, the uh, restaurants that we have. And the others, we have a large Hispanic population that works in town also on a lot of the horse farms and things. Uh, we actually have a significant uh, number of Hispanics in, in the school district. And so getting the message out to them, relying on the county to do a lot of the translations and stuff for us is, is it was very, uh, very important. Very early on, we do allow outside dining for the restaurants, and we just kind of opened it up and said, no permits, tell us what you want to do, and we'll just go out and, and approve them. And so all of those types of things worked out very effectively for us. Um, we have a lot of open land. As George said, we're about 24 square miles, and we have 5,201 people in the last census. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where the one came from, but, uh, but we have a huge amount of open land. We have 1,200 acres just at the North Selma Open Land Foundation. And what we found is everybody from Ridgefield, Lewisboro, Somers, Southeast, they were all coming and walking on the property because they felt pretty, pretty comfortable. They could be quite, quite a distance apart. And uh, uh, for a long time, we ended up being uh, uh, you know, a spot where people can come and actually get out and walk around without worrying about, uh, about COVID. Um, I was actually quarantined at the time uh, last year twice for two weeks, ended up working at home for both. One was right in the middle of my vacation, so it was a little bit of an issue, but uh, I think all in all it worked out well. Nobody in the town hall complex got COVID, which was, which was pretty important. One of the things I wanted to mention is we worked with uh, um, Feeding Westchester. And th that group is just phenomenal. You know, early on, we realized we had a bunch of people that uh, you know, had lost their jobs. They didn't have money. There was a lot of programs that didn't quite kick in. And we had people that were actually calling up looking for food. We ran a food program uh, through our ambulance corps uh, building, at our ambulance corps building for seven months. And 
I, I didn't have the cash actually to do it. I went over to the Lions. I'm a longtime uh, Lions Club member. And they ran a GoFundMe page. They collected $65,000 in a very short amount of time. And uh, we linked up with Feeding for Westchester and a couple of other groups to buy diapers and things. And I have to tell you, again, Feeding Westchester is, they were just phenomenal. Um, the amount of food that they delivered to our town. And we had people from, again, from Lewisboro, Somers, uh, Southeast, uh, just the, the area around us coming over. And, you know, we're putting food in 150 cars. I probably shouldn't say it, but I got a bunch of bags from the county. I'm not sure what they said on the outside. They were green bags. I got it from the planning department, and we used those to put census. food in. I think they were, <laughs> they were the census bags. And we loaded them up with food and sent them home for people in a little cart inside saying, please, please make sure you take the census. Um, but it's been, it's been a long journey, and uh, you wouldn't think that we'd still be here 15 months later after this all started, but uh, the exciting part now are things starting to open up. Um, the biggest problem now is, is, you know, when we can take the masks off, and hopefully we'll hear something shortly about that. But I want to thank, uh, really thank the county. It's, a lot of this comes from the top, I understand, but he also has, uh, George, you have a bunch of just wonderful people. And I'll, I'll add Ken into that wonderful group. Uh, people that go out of their way every day to help everybody in town. So thank you so much and very much appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. And Supervisor Warren Lucas from the town of North Salem. And uh, I want to return the compliment that the, uh, the men and women of your town have been terrific partners. And as we try to administer these things, the, you know, the diversity of Westchester County, uh, when you're trying to deal with people who need vaccinations or back in the day, we we're trying to get people tested for the for COVID virus. You mentioned food distribution. That is one challenge in a city like Yonkers or the city of my birth, Mount Vernon. And it's another challenge in a town like North Salem. And yet everyone in your organization, the men and women of your town rose to the occasion and uh, we're able to get through this. Hopefully we're almost done. But uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you and, and the folks of North Salem. Thank you very much. So um, we're, uh, we're going to continue to invite some additional uh, members of uh, local governments here for some of our future updates. So uh, if you haven't seen your town or village or city represented yet, it's coming. And we'll make sure that your chief executive makes it here, too, and shares their thoughts about what's happening in their community. So getting into some of the policy areas, uh, the governor uh, has announced just today that New York State is going to adopt the uh, CDC new mask and social distance guidance for fully vaccinated people. And that's going to start this Wednesday, today being the 17th. That means the 19th of the month we will move to the CDC uh, situations. Masks will still be required on mass transit for our purposes, the Beeline bus system, or if you take Metro North or in the New York City subway system, in nursing homes, in homeless shelters, we run homeless shelters in Westchester County, correctional facilities, which includes the county jail as well as uh, state institutions that are here in Westchester County, schools, and healthcare facilities across the state, hospitals and the like, in accordance with the new federal guidelines. These are the guidelines that have come down from the CDC. Uh, private venues can still impose additional rules as they see fit, but the longstanding statewide executive order on masks that's been in place since April of 2020 uh, is expiring in the next 48 hours. So a private entity, a business may determine that a mask is necessary for you to walk into their uh, establishment, or they may not. It's not required unless they fall into one of these different categories. And so each of the different uh, businesses and entities, religious institutions, not-for-profit offices, will all have the ability to make that decision on their own on the basis of, most important, full vaccination of the individuals involved. This is not take off your mask regardless. This is if you're fully vaccinated because you're now, in theory, protected from this disease and the people around you also fully vaccinated, protected from disease. If you are not vaccinated, you are still subject to the disease and you're subject to getting the disease and transferring it to other people. And even though the vaccines are highly uh, efficacious, they're not 100% assured. Uh, what the vaccines do is make it less likely, far less likely that you'll get the disease. And if you do get the disease, you won't get it as seriously as might put you in the hospital or potentially cost you your life unless you have other underlying causes that are significant. So all of this is, is good news for all of us. If you are immunocompromised, uh, if you're unvaccinated, you should continue to wear masks and continue to socially distance. But what we're seeing now is really the, the, the next big step to opening up the society. Different states are doing it at different paces. 
You know, we're in New York State. The laws that we operate under as a county government, our county health department, is to administer the decisions of the New York State Department of Health. So even when the CDC issued guidelines, it was up to New York State Department of Health to adopt them. Now that they have, our county health department now will administer those rules. There will be a thousand questions that come out of this. We're already getting uh, notations. We're going to be talking with other municipal officials this afternoon in a call, and I'm sure we're going to be identifying a hundred different areas where they're going to look for policies as to how do we handle it from this point forward, and, and that will be part of the give and take between the different levels of government, and that's why it's very important for us to have cooperation amongst each other. It's important for us, the county government, to view the municipal governments as our partner. It's important for us to work across political party lines. We have the right to disagree on any public policy that we want, but when it comes time to work together to implement something, that's where we have to find common, common ground and common interest. And all of those things are yet ahead of us. But it is a very good sign, those numbers that I've told you, if they continue to decrease uh, the way they seem to, if the vaccination numbers continue to increase, um, you know, we hopefully see the end of this pandemic. And we've made some decisions already along those lines, but, you know, we'll see what happens in our numbers to help support additional decisions. 12-year-olds are now eligible to receive the Pfizer vaccine, and so at the county center where they are administering Pfizer vaccines, 12 years of age and older are authorized by New York State Department of Health. So 12, 13, 14, 15-year-olds, four years age cohort join the 16 and above that have already been um, authorized. However, you need parental or guardian consent in order for that shot to be the case. Now, I don't expect a 12-year-old to just walk into the county center by themselves. Uh, Walk-ins are appropriate. Now, you don't have to have an appointment. Appointment is helpful, but a walk-in is acceptable, but you must have parental consent. So that's important to keep in mind. And uh, wherever the Pfizer vaccine is being administered, and that can be in pharmacies or any place else, uh, they can be administered to 12-year-olds and so forth. We have a series of clinics uh, that we've set up uh, for the next week. Uh, you know, we've called them a lot of different things, pop-ups. I tend to call them satellite pop-ups, you know, sound uh, a little less uh, serious. But uh, some of these clinics that are going to be set up will be, will be done so to try to reach into different geographies around the county. And as much as we've had the county center operating now for four months, and uh, the Yarkas Armory is a large facility has been open for two months. We have our clinics in White Plains and Greenberg. Um, it, it's not realistic to expect people from North Salem or down in Pelham to drive some distance to get a vaccination. We have to make it as easy as possible and get, get the vaccine to the individuals as close as is possible. So some of these upcoming um, dates that we have scheduled are designed to reach some of the younger people and uh, to reach them in the areas of the county that puts it a little closer to them. The ones that we have scheduled this week, um, tomorrow, Tuesday, May 18th, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., we will be at the Peekskill Family Resource Center, 400 South Division Street in Peekskill. And um, I think we may have uh, most of those appointments already uh, uh, booked up, but that's coming. And then we have on the 19th, from 2 to 6.30 p.m., at the Dobbs Ferry School District in the High School Gymnasium on Broadway. Uh, we're looking for school districts there from Ardsley, Dobbs Ferry, Hastings, and Irvington that have joined together as a group to vaccinate some of their young people. And then uh, the day after that, on Thursday the 20th, we'll be at Fox Lane High School in the large gymnasium that's on South Bedford Road right off of I-684, exit 4. Uh, the Bedford School District, Bedford Central School District, the Katona Lewisboro School District are combining resources to do that. Last week, we had two similar clinics like this at Westlake High School and Pelham High School in a consolidated efforts for a number of different school districts, and we were able to get a good number of young people vaccinated. That is probably the largest cohort of people that are unvaccinated. They haven't been eligible to vaccinate prior to now, and now that they can, we're going to try to uh, deliver that as best as we can. Uh, there's going to be some vaccination going on in Yonkers schools this week done by uh, Empress. There's some details that will be shared uh, in the public uh, through our different uh, folks. And then we're holding a clinic uh, on Saturday at the Salvation Army in Portchester on Bush Avenue, 10 to 4 on Saturday, and then the following Monday from 3 to 7.30 p.m. as we try to reach out again to some of those different constituencies. Uh, I'm going to ask Ken Jenkins, Deputy County Executive, to talk a little bit about our homebound vaccination programs. Ken? Thanks, George. Um, as the County Executive has pointed out, we, have, we are doing extremely well on the vaccination front. And with that, the department, the County Department of Senior Programs and Services um, has announced, again, the additional availability of COVID-19 for those folks that are homebound. 
And I know we are popping the number up on the screen. It's 914-813-6300 to make an appointment um, to be, have the homebound team come out to you. And that's a homebound individual, any age, is eligible to receive the vaccine. They're doing the one-shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine, so keep that in mind um, for age eligibility for those individuals that may be homebound. And the Department of Senior Programs and Services has worked together with the local municipalities, with North Salem and every municipality the county executive mentioned earlier, to reach out to those homebound individuals because we know as the numbers continue to go down that getting the vaccine is the way to get out of this particular scenario and the results are there. So people need to take advantage of this opportunity. If you are a caregiver of someone that's homebound, you're eligible as well. So that can happen for you again by calling 813-6300. Um, that's the Department of Senior Programs and Services. Do it today because doing the, the vaccines and getting those vaccines in people's arms, and as the county executive pointed out, fully vaccinated means two weeks after that last um, dose, whether it's two dose Pfizer or Moderna, or the one dose Johnson & Johnson, and then you'll be eligible for all of those um, renewed um, anti-mask um, scenarios that have been happening, that have been announced recently, that start on Wednesday. So again, homebound vaccinations. Thanks. Thanks, Ken. Thanks very much, Ken. Uh, we'll be back again uh, on Thursday, as we have uh, for the last number of months, with an update uh, at 2 o'clock on Thursday. Uh, so between now and then, if there's any other news, if there's any other announcements, from the state, we'll be certainly happy to share it with you. Um, looking at the progress of where we are, we will probably continue the twice weekly updates, certainly through the month of May, through uh, much of the month of June, depending on how things work. We may get to the point where the numbers are dropping so dramatically that the twice weekly updates aren't really necessary, and uh, we might roll back to once a week updates. We, we, we want this COVID issue to be dealt with transparently, but we don't want to try to commandeer time if, uh, if we get back to normal. So we'll see how it goes. For right now, we're going to continue to do it twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays at 2 o'clock. And we appreciate those of you who watch either uh, live when we deliver this or uh, this, uh, this tape stays uh, active for people to look at at other times of the day. Also this Thursday night at 7 o'clock, I'll be delivering uh, my annual State of the County message to the Westchester County Board of Legislators uh, in the Board of Legislators Chamber on the eighth floor of the county office building. Uh, members of the legislature will be present. There will be a reduced number of attendees in the room, and uh, it will be broadcast so that those who wish to see it can. We'll, we'll talk about the different issues that we have tackled in the past, some of the issues we look forward to tackling in the future. Our last State of the County message a year ago was delayed from the usual month of April, which is the, by tradition when they, when they have been given. Uh, we delayed it last year until October because we were right in the middle of the pandemic in April of last year, and the State of the County was very much in flux. But uh, this year now, we delayed it a slightly more month just to see exactly what we're finding out now, what's happening with some of the protocols. So we'll be able to give you a clearer update of where we are. This will be my fourth state of the county message, the last one for the uh, current term of office that I'm in. And uh, we'll lay out some game plans that we'll uh, complete this year and project to the future, whatever the future may hold. I want to check with Catherine Chaffee, see if we have any questions uh, from mm. press. We have some questions. The first question is from David Proper from Lohud. He asks, do you agree with Governor Cuomo aligning with the CDC's guidelines about masks? Yes, I do. I think uh, we're, we're ready to move to the next step of uh, normalcy. Uh, I, do, I do think it's important to emphasize, because I saw a lot of this over the weekend, uh, the, the maskless reality is based on a couple of different important things. The first important thing is that you're vaccinated. And that means both vaccination shots if you've taken a Pfizer or Moderna shot and the double shots plus the two week period of time. That gives you maximum coverage. Uh, and then mask less, uh, you are much less likely to give the, the COVID virus to anyone else. That's the purpose of having the masks, not to protect you as much from the other person as you being, uh, you not, uh, reaching out somebody else if you have the disease. So mask less if you've been vaccinated twice, and I think that makes logical sense to me given where we are in the society at this point. Okay, the next 
Question comes from Eric Feldman from News 12. He asks, you talk about the importance of coordination and collaboration with municipalities regarding masks and COVID policy. Did you ever have any conversations with the governor before he made his announcement today? Um, I had the opportunity to speak to some of the staff people who did reach out uh, to me, and I'm assuming they did to other county executives to solicit our opinions. Uh, so we gave those opinions uh, based on what we saw. Uh, it's a big state, and the state is very different from one end of it to the other. What we're experiencing here in Westchester County uh, may not exactly be the experience they're having in the Adirondacks or the experience they're having in Western New York. So uh, I assume, uh, you know, he heard a lot of different voices, and uh, I appreciate the fact that Westchester could be heard in that. Uh, it's the same way as we do in Westchester County. I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, Warren's town is a little bit different from the city of Yonkers. There are two municipalities within the county. And so I value his input, I value Mike Spano's input, and somewhere in the middle comes policy that we think works for everybody. And the last question, which is also from Eric from News 12, he asks, are you concerned about people who are not vaccinated taking advantage of the new CDC guidance? Are there steps the county's considering on that issue? Well, we're going to look and see exactly how we're going to handle um, people who are using county facilities uh, in an in-person situation. Uh, a year ago, when we opened up the pools and the beaches, we did certain uh, protocols of, uh, of volume of number of people and how we handled it. There was no vaccination at the time. No one was vaccinated, so our policies were across the board. We're going to have to concern ourselves now with when we open the beaches at the end of the month, it's only a couple of weeks away, the Playland Beach and the Croton Point Park Beach, and then within the month when we open up our four pools and Playland, uh, exactly how we want to handle the issue of masks and people vaccinated, not vaccinated. We know that uh, as, as happy as we are to know that, you know, almost 70 percent of our 18 plus population is vaccinated. Uh, we don't, at least one dose, uh, we don't know how we're going to handle that portion that is not vaccinated. And at this stage of the game, no vaccinations have yet been authorized for children, two, three, four, five-year-old children. So there are some gray areas here that we have to work through. Um, and so I'm naturally concerned. You know, the, the whole purpose of putting on masks and having uh, social distancing and reducing the volume of people, this, this is simply not to spread the disease. Under all other factors, I would much rather we have a normal societal reality and we come and go without masks, without social distancing. And I think where we had discretion over the course of the last year plus, uh, I think I said earlier 15 months, it's been 14 months, Warren was correct. Uh, over these 14 months uh, was to look at the function and determine whether the function, if we, it, if we allowed for it, would likely spread the disease or not. And on that basis, we were able to open up Bicycle Sunday last year and this year, golf courses last year and this year, but we didn't have fireworks last year. And at this point, we've made no authorization for fireworks this year because fireworks and people watch it, people tend to cluster. They get very close together to look up to see the, to see the show. Um, so we're going to have to figure out <clears throat> how to handle the fact that we will not have 100 percent vaccination, probably never will have 100 percent vaccination. But, uh, you know, at some point in time, there will be people who unvaccinated will be just as desirous of taking the mask off for whatever reason, whatever the reason is, ideological reasons, personal health or whatnot. And uh, we have to determine how we're going to handle that. How are we going to handle it uh, for those facilities that the county owns? You heard the governor's mask uh, policy changes mask usage but does not include mass transit. We run the Beeline bus system. It does not include those incarcerated. We run a county jail. Uh, so there are certain circumstances that fall within the authority of county government for which the mask policy will not yet apply. But uh, I think as we have for these 14 months, we're going to try to make practical decisions, and as I just alluded to, somebody calling for my opinion, I'm going to call for Warren's opinion, and, uh, and as I get that input, we'll make hopefully intelligent decisions as we go forward. All right. So any other questions by any other members of the press, you feel free to contact Catherine Chaffee, 995-2932, and uh, she'll be happy to get an answer for you and direct it. As I said, we'll be back again on Thursday at 2 o'clock for a COVID update, and uh, at 7 o'clock that night, I'll be delivering the State of the County message. In the meantime, uh, we hope you're all healthy and well, and uh, stay safe, and uh, if, you're, if it's appropriate to wear your mask, I will. Thank you.